to the House of Hope Atlanta, where life with God is better in every way, every day. We welcome you to the House of Hope. to God. Hallelujah. In Jesus name I pray. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Family, this morning the word of God, our food is coming from Psalms 34. And I'm reading verses 15 through 19 from the King James. And it reads in this wise. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that, that do evil to cut off the rem, 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 remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that of a broken heart and, and save it such as be of a contrite spirit. Many, hey, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, I say the Lord, the Lord delivered him out of all of them. We serve a mighty God. We serve an awesome God that can do anything but fail. Hey. Hallelujah. Do we have any victorious people here this morning? I said, do we have any victorious people here this morning? 
Can we give our victorious God a victorious praise this morning? Hallelujah. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. We give you praise because you never left us or forsake, forsake, forsaken us. And we thank you for that, God. Hallelujah. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never be defeated. I said, because God is the greatest power, you shall never be defeated. Can we give God praise for that this morning? Come on, give him your worship this morning. Hallelujah. Let him hear you. We bless you, Jesus. And because God yeah. is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. Can y'all help me say that? And because God is the greatest shall never, never be defeated, and because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated, I shall rise, and I shall be, I shall go in victory. Weapon formed against me will never overtake me. Help me say that. I shall rise. I shall rise. I shall be. I shall be. I shall go. I shall go in victory. victory. No weapon formed. No weapon formed against me. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. 
shall, you shall never be defeated. And because God is the greatest, you shall never, never be. Now say it to yourself. And because God is the greatest power, I shall never, never be. victorious God. He never fails. Hallelujah. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, because God is the greatest power. You, 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 and your mama too will never be defeated. Hallelujah. turn up the volume on your worship I said come on and turn up the volume on your worship all the victorious people like Corey said you ought to shout with the voice of triumph because God is the greatest power we shall never be defeated somebody shout in the house about in the back of the house somebody shout in the house I'm talking about the front of the house somebody shout in the house hallelujah we can shout about the fact that we'll never be defeated but the reason why we'll never be defeated is because God is the greatest power. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we are glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Somebody give God praise now. Glad to be in the number, glad to be in the service. And we're here this morning celebrating. This is the culmination of our pastor's 20th anniversary. Dr. E. Dewey Smith Jr. Let's give God praise for the angel of this house, our pastor. We're so grateful to God for him sharing Dr. Smith with us for 20 years and his wonderful wife, Lady Andrea Smith, and their family. And so today we're going to celebrate all service. Amen. We want to welcome you to the House of Hope Atlanta. And we know that God is the greatest power and we shall never be defeated. Amen. And we want to welcome our online audience. Let's give God praise for our Hope Global audience that's watching. Listen, wherever you're watching from, won't you put it in the chat now? Let us know. Share your name. Share where you're watching from. Let us know that you're here and you're worshiping with us this morning. We're so glad to have you here with House of Hope Atlanta. While you're watching, there's a QR code that's on your screen. You can use your device and you can scan that code and it'll give you more information on how uh, we can get in contact with you to let you know how welcome you are to House of Hope Atlanta. Amen. For those of you that are in the house today, if this is your first time visiting with us, won't you wave your hand just real quick so we can see you across the room. Hallelujah. We see them all over the room. Let's give God praise for them, House of Hope. Amen. Amen. And so for you, we have something special for you immediately following service at our guest services table. You can receive a special gift from us here at House of Hope Atlanta just to let you know that we appreciate you for joining us today. You could have gone anywhere to worship, but you decided to drive to 4650 Flat Shows. And so we're so glad to have you with us. So one more time on behalf of Dr. E. Dewey Smith, Lady Andrea Smith, and our entire House of Hope family, let's give God praise for our welcoming guests and visitors this morning. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Now, without any further ado, if you would give your attention to the screens for a special tribute and our hope happenings. Pastor Smith, my pastor, my friend, my brother, congratulations on 20 years. You know, our friendship goes back more than 30 years now. I can remember it like yesterday when you, on, I'm sorry, the first lady and I were out eating lunch and just singing in the car. You know, I, I remember it like I've had some good days. <laughs> Now, I know that brought a smile to you and the First Lady's face, faces because I cannot sing, as you have told me many, many times. I'll leave it to you guys. But let me tell you, Pastor, I am so proud of you and the journey and what you've achieved. I remember like yesterday, 20 years ago, we started a journey together. Our paths will always be intertwined. I came to Columbus at Aflac and started a whole new career with your help. You blessed me. You prayed for me. And you set me on my way. And thank God, I've been so blessed here. Uh, started my whole career over, and now I've made it the president because of God and because of you. But I've watched your journey. My God, what a journey it's been. For the first seven years, you took me with you. I worked with you on that media ministry. I never missed a Sunday. Never missed a Sunday. Morning and afternoon, I was there because you know why? Because you helped me. You've always been there for my family. You've always been there for me. And you know what? That's just who you are. You bless others. You inspire others and you lead others. Brother, keep doing what you're doing. You continue to inspire me. And I will always have your back. I love you. I am so proud to call you my friend. And I know that you will continue to lift as you climb. And today, be thankful and be grateful for 20 years. And as we always say, we know that friendship is a venture to the soul. Friendship is a center to the soul. And I love you and will love you till the day we die. Hey, Pastor Smith, this is Reginald Wayne Sharp Jr., one of your sons in ministry. Just wanted to pause and say happy 20th pastoral anniversary. I remember 2003, back in November when you preached your first sermon. You weren't even the pastor yet. The title of that message, I believe, was the blessings in disguise. And from that day until now, your preaching ministry, your pastoral ministry has literally been an immense blessing to my life. I wish you and your entire family God's best. And I don't know how much longer you'll be the pastor. That's between you and the Lord. But I do know this. You have done an exceptional job pastoring the House of Hope Atlanta and Decatur, Georgia, Atlanta. The world is better because you passed this way. I love you, and I hope that you really savor this period of celebration and know that the best is still yet to come. Peace, peace. You've got to be seen green. Got to be, huh? Were you watching The Wiz recently or something? No, but we got on this green, so that's the first thing that kind of popped Pop in my to your mind. Head. Okay. You've got to be seen, cause you got on your green, and of course you're gonna throw a little. I wasn't gonna say it, but just re <laughs> do what you're supposed to be doing. Family Wellness Wednesday is back. Come out at 10 o'clock a.m. this Wednesday for physical wellness. Then at 11 o'clock a.m. A.M., not R.M. Mm -hmm. That's all right. A.M. They know what you meant. For our wellness education. And finally, at 12 noon, for our spiritual wellness, which is Bible study. Additionally, we are delighted to announce our partnership with Silver Sneakers, expanding the reach of our wellness program to a broader audience. Some of our own HOHA members are our new facilitators as part of Silver Sneakers, namely Anthony Williams, Christina Knight, and Tasha Warford. Each of them brings a wealth of expertise and 
and passion to elevate the physical wellness experience on Wellness Wednesdays. Now, our Wellness Wednesday also features diverse health experts who cover topics such as physical, financial, emotional, and spiritual wellness every week, courtesy of our esteemed community partners at 11 a.m. and at 12 noon. So join us for a light and healthy lunch while we wrap up our Wellness Wednesdays with Noonday Bible Study, strengthening both your body and your spirit. And best of all, we've been telling y'all this now, this is the best part. Participation in all of these events is free of charge. So there's no reason why you just don't come on and, and, and get well. Uh, we look forward to that. So for more details, just text the word wellness to 678-201-1351. Now, Black Marriage Day will be celebrated on Tuesday, March 26. We are encouraging all married couples to celebrate on that day. Here are some valuable insights we'd like to share regarding the benefits of marriage that you may not be aware of. Now for women, number one, experience a more satisfying relationship and the best platform to express sexuality. Number two, enjoy better emotional well-being. Three, tend to be wealthier. Four, have a lower likelihood of being victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, or other violent crimes. And five, are less prone to attempting or committing suicide. For men, enjoy a longer life expectancy, experience better physical health, tend to be wealthier, benefit from an increased employment st stability, and earn higher wages. Those some facts I didn't, I didn't know that. I sure did Learning stuff, learning yeah. stuff. Hope happens, we, the more you know. Hey. But if you are married and you're in here today, we invite you to stand up. Come on, go go ahead and get up. Even if she, she got on your nerves this morning, if he got on your nerves or made you late for church, stand up as we stand as we honor and celebrate Black love. Let's give it up for these married couples. Uh huh. We want you to join us, all of the married couples in the house, join us for a token of love after this service in room E200. Now, for further details on this black love affair that we have going on, we want you to text black love to 678 201 1351. Let's come together to celebrate the beauty of black love. Now, this is for our virtual Hope Global family. Thank you so very much for your responses and your signups. We are sharing new content for our global family and virtual church. If you'd like to receive real-time ministry updates, devotional content, and ministry opportunities, just scan the QR code on the screen. Sign up today so that we can live better together. And we love to keep our online church family connected with us. So in order to do that, we want you to connect by doing this. If you need prayer or have a prayer request, text the word prayer. If you'd like to join the House of Hope Atlanta as a member, text the word connect. And if you desire to be saved, text the word salvation to 678-201-1351. Our 40 days of fasting and praying are almost over, but you still have time to join time. until March 28th. During this Lent period, as a congregation, we will seek the Lord in prayer, read scriptures, serve by giving alms, and practice self-control through fasting. For more information, go to the church's website or our social media platforms. If you'd like to join our fasting small group, just text FAST24 to 678-201-1351. Crystal, because if you've been late with the fast, you can go ahead and get on it now, and that's all right, and make up. Yeah. Just make up for what you, you lost. Yeah, uh -huh. do that. How are you going to... Family, join the Ministers of Hope Atlanta in the presentation of Jesus' seven last words. There's going to be preaching, worship, and dramatic settings of Christ's suffering during his last hours on the cross. If, if Some of y'all have been to the seven last words. It's mm -hmm. a powerful, like... It's a powerful night. It's good. We want you to join us in the atrium at 7 p.m. on Friday, March 29th. That's Good Friday. Family, we've got to go for now. But until next time, remember that life with God is better in every way, every day. Be blessed. You got to be seen green. Wouldn't be called dead. Red. Oh, so you. Oh, I know that. What I you trying to talk part, about? You trying to talk about me bringing up the song? <laughs> that used to be one of my favorite movies of all time. You know what's, what's about that movie though? What? That's kind of creepy, like. Oh yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, when they uh -huh. start coming out the walls and all that. The... Yes, let's not. Let's go to church because we need to pray. Because that I don't got scared just thinking about it. <laughs> do -do -do -do. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day the Lord hath made. And we're here to rejoice and we're here to be glad in it. 
And certainly we thank God for everybody here today except Corey Butts. Thank God for everybody. I want to thank our media ministry, Corey and Crystal, for doing just a wonderful job in keeping us uh, engaged and amused at the same time. What, what a privilege, what an honor it is to share with you today. And we thank God for you, 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 and you. Um, I'm just completely blown away just by your love and how kind and how gracious uh, the wonderful people of this church uh, have treated my family and I. It's just uh, beyond mind-blowing. I'm just uh, just deeply, deeply moved, you know. Um, I think about the first time coming to this church just to uh, um, give, turn some documentation June 30th, 2023, and Andre and I drove up here, um, um, actually on my birthday. We met Pastor Shepherd and Deacon Edwards for the first time. And uh, when I just reflect on those moments into now, um, leaving a place where I've been since I was 19 years old, a 19-year-old sophomore at Morehouse, um, very in incredibly comfortable to start all over to come to a place where you don't know anybody, leaving family. And uh, what a challenge. And then to follow in the footsteps of a great legend like Pastor H.F. Shepherd, uh, just uh, that challenge. Um, trying to move forward and the growth and all of the myriad of things that we've had to deal with. But through it all, you have been just, just a wonderful, wonderful congregation. And I'm just so thankful. I'm just so deeply moved uh, that the Lord has kept us together as pastor and people for 20 years. It is, it's, it is just amazing to me um, to see all of the great things that have happened and the wonderful shoulders that we stand upon now. And so I'm deeply, deeply, deeply humbled by your love. I really, really am. Everything. I, I want to take this moment now to, as I said to you, I think it's important that we never forget uh, the bridge uh, upon which we stand and the bridge that brought us over. And there's a young man who uh, came to this church when he was 29 years of age in October of 1957 and served this church from October 27th, 1957 until his retirement, March 26, 2003. He and his wife led this ministry for 47 years with absolutely splendid leadership and vision and integrity. And in 2006, the Lord called him from labor to reward. And in 2023, he called that beautiful wife who served with him, Ivory Collins Shepherd. We thank the Lord for her memory now. Come on, give God praise for her as well. What a dynamic duo. And I just believe it's important that we never forget. My grandfather, who passed in 1981, passed at a church for many years and didn't have retirement, didn't have 401k. And when he got sick, he passed away. And I remember pushing him to the pulpit in his wheelchair because he was disabled. And when he passed away, I never forget it. it was, I remember seeing it vividly. Um, the church came to my grandmother's house after the funeral and they thanked uh, her for 20 years of leadership and they gave her a card. And uh, this was their expression of love for my grandfather for 20 years. And she opened the card and there were five wrinkled $1 bills. Uh, I said five wrinkled $1 bills for a man who traveled from Macon, Georgia to Warrington, Georgia to the Mill Rock Baptist Church and, uh, and uh, some of the people at the time, you know, just some people don't know. And, and many people in the church loved him, but people didn't know. And um, he served there and, and, and it hit me like, man, all those years and, 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 and you, don't, you, don't, you don't do right uh, to say thank you. And, uh, and so when I went to my first church in Beulah Land, Mrs. Hudson, uh, we, we wanted to make sure that she was honored. And so we instituted something that would uh, give her half of her husband's salary until she retired, until, until she passed away. And that church kept that going after I left. And I thank God for that, Miss Barbara Hudson. They kept that going. And, uh, and when Pastor Shepherd passed away, our church made a decision that we would make sure that we would give Mrs. Shepherd at least half of Pastor's salary until she passed away. And we did that for over 17 years. We did that to make sure that she was taken care of. Well, they had two beautiful children, 
who made sacrifices and saw their parents sacrifice everything for this ministry. And I'm going to say it for everybody. I want to say it so it won't just be mean, but I want our board to hear it, our deacons to hear it, our staff to hear it, so I never have to say this again. Whenever, as long as the Lord will have me to share with you and we have church anniversary, we can never have a pastor anniversary or a church anniversary and then not at least acknowledge them. I, that's, that's what I want you to do. I want to make sure that we acknowledge them and bless them. And so today, um, I don't know if they're here or not, if uh, Ivory Roberson is here. Come on, if Ivory. If Ivory or her brother is here, I got, I got some sugar I want to put in both their hands. Yeah, come on. Come on here. Thank you. Amen. Come on. Come on, y'all. Yeah, this is the youngest daughter of the late Dr. H.F. Shepard. And Mrs. Ivory Collins Shepherd, she's just as sweet. She's an educator here in Clayton County Schools and born and raised in this church and just as classy and gracious as her mother. Her brother's not here today. I don't know if we, we told him, but I got something for him too. Amen. They can, uh, I, I like to put a little sugar in the hand. Love is not just what it says, it's also what it does. And every church anniversary, every pastor's anniversary, I want to make sure that you don't just give me something or my family or the church, but let's make sure that during that month we also honor the shepherd children. Somebody say amen. I said let somebody say amen. Come on, this is for you. Yes, sir. And this is for the him. Thank you. You want to say anything? I thank you. I want to put you on the spot. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I know. Thank I love you. So thank much. you. So I love you, baby. Thank you. Come on, let's give Ivory Shepherd Roberson a hand. Thank God for her. Always supportive, always kind. Come on, let's give God praise. It's because of her parents that we're here today. Her parents laid the foundation upon which we stand. And, and I'm grateful to God for them. Amen. So I'm thankful and I appreciate you so much. We're getting ready to worship the Lord through giving now. Uh, it's, it's, his, it's offering time. Amen. Hallelujah. It's offering time. So let's let's move quickly. We're going to pause for a word of prayer. Glory to God. I'm so thankful. My heart is so full. My heart is so full, y'all. My heart is so full. I'm so thankful. So just so thankful this morning. So grateful. Amen. So thankful. Lord, thank you for just for how you've blessed us and brought us. And thank you for how you have blessed us to be a blessing to others. You so love the world that you gave Jesus. And we thank you for the generosity and the giving spirit that you've given to us. And thank you that this moment of community, that our worship to you is not about what we can garner and gain from you, but we thank you that even when you eradicate debts, it's for us to do more to the kingdom and be a blessing to others. And now, God, as we've come to worship you through giving, would you receive these our gifts? Sanctify every gift and every giver. Let no one lack, let no one have a need after giving these gifts. Would you multiply them and use them in your service? We thank you, Lord. Thank you that you blessed us with something to give. And there are those who may not have anything to give this day, today. Would you open up windows of opportunity for them? employment so they can provide for themselves and take care of their families and they make a tangible contribution for kingdom building receive these now our gifts use these gifts so we may continue to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world so they could be meeting your house for us to do ministry to glorify and honor you thank you now thank you thank you for this whole moment of worship to you and thank you for the, the self unselfishness of your people the selflessness of your people to take this time to do something special for my family. I'm grateful. So bless our gifts now. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you need an envelope, lift your hands quickly. If you need an envelope, if you want to give by check or cash, lift your hands. If you want to give by check or cash, lift your check or cash, lift your hand. If you need an envelope, and one of our ushers will get you an envelope if you want to give by check or cash, lift your hands. If you're in this room, if you're in the overflow area, lift your hands and one of the ushers will get you an envelope now if you want to give by check or cash just lift that hand uh, if you don't if you're not giving by check or cash and you want to give electronically 
there are several ways you can give electronically. Of course, you can give by text to give. Uh, the QR code is on the screen. You can give uh, H-O-H-A-T, that's for text to give. Tithe, H-O-H-A-O for offering, H-O-H-H-E-F, that's for God first for the building fund. We've got a lot more work to do on this campus and uh, a lot more work that we have to do uh, before we get back into our cathedral. It's going to take a lot more work uh, to get that cathedral up. And so we need you to give, continue to give toward the God first as well. You can give text to give. You can give cash app, uh, dollar sign H-O-H, um, dollar sign H-O-H-A-T-L. You can give through that. You can give through Zelle at finance at gtrbc.org. And those who are watching online, the lower third are, lower thirds are there for you. If you want to give through the P.O. box, I'll give to the, uh, through the website. Through the website, just click the giving link and follow the prompts accordingly. Or if you're watching online and you want to send it to the P.O. box, our P.O. box is P.O. box 361 499 Decatur, Georgia 30036. Again, 361 499 Decatur, Georgia 30036. Hey, let's give our online audience a hand. My God, you guys are growing by leaps and bounds. Um, uh, we're, 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 I'm told we're averaging about 20 to 25,000 people every week through all the platforms who are watching online uh, concurrently through our services on Sunday. Come on, give them all a hand. God bless you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you for being a part today for this. Amen. Listen, we're, we're going to make ready to, you know, there. when I was ordained in ministry, they told me about the three tables in the church. One table was for the Lord. The other table was for the poor and the benevolent. And the third table is called the Lord's table. And I never shall forget um, hearing the old preachers say, how do you know you've been called to preach? And one of the answers was, because I love the brethren. <laughs> I said, wow, they didn't say anything about the sistering. <laughs> and so I don't really remember that part. But the third part was, I never forget this. It was Pastor Jacob Parker who's with the Lord now. He said something that was so beautiful. He said, it's through our offerings that we show our love to God. That's through the offering table where we show our love for God. He said, but it's through communion that God shows his love for us. I'll never forget that. I was 18 when he said that. And so now we've come for this moment where we show our love to God through giving, but also God shares his love with us by God sending God's son. And we're going to pause now, and we're going to pause for the service of communion. We're going to pause now. And I want you to get the elements when you came in Maybe you did not have yours. If you did not, I want you to lift your hands. If you didn't get one on your way in, lift your hands. Our deacons will get you one. I want to thank, I want to thank everybody, too, for wearing these T-shirts, amen, and for being a blessing. And uh, I, knew, I, I, knew, I, I didn't realize what they were doing, but I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, when I was young, I would feel fun about doing communion, not in a robe or a suit. But I realized that communion is not about what you got on. Jesus didn't have a suit or a robe on either that night. Amen. And so we're going to pause for a moment and say this song. It reaches to the highest mountain. Thank you, Jesus. My, my, my. I know it flows to the low, lowest valley. Oh yeah. oh, yeah, I know the blood that gives me strength, my, 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 from day to day, day, it would never lose, it would never lose, it's fine, my, my, one more time, it reaches to the highest mountain, it reaches to the highest mountain. I'm grateful about that. Hallelujah. I know it flows to the low, lowest 
Jesus bear. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I know the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, from day. If you're watching online, help me say it. Help me, everybody. I know it reaches to the highest. No matter how high you get. And if you have low moments, here's the good news. final night of our Lord's earthly life he took his disciples into an upper room and after they had supper together he took unleavened bread from the table which signified his body which would be given and broken on the cross of Calvary for you and I this is not cannibalism we're not literally eating the body of Jesus it's just a symbol he said, I want you to commemorate the greatest sacrifice that's going to ever be known to humankind. You're going to become my body. So I want to give it for you. So just in case you forget about me, every now and then, just come together and take of my body. Because he knew that human beings would be prone to forget. Lord, we thank you for this symbol of the body of Jesus. Thank you for this sacrifice that was made for us. That we take in obedience in faith and in commemoration. He Bible says he break it and he blessed it. He all of it represents the body of our Lord. He then took the cup, the fruit of the vine, representing the blood that would be shed for the remission and propitiation of our sins. We're grateful for the salvific efficacy that the blood represents for those of us who are believers. Lord, thank you for this symbol of your blood which was shed for us on the cross of Calvary so we may have union with thee, that we may have harmony with those who are humankind. Lord, cleanse us. Continue to perfect everything concerning us so we can be what you've called us to be. Drink you all of it. It represents the blood of our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you. To the highest mountain. Our usher's gonna come. Would, would you pass your your containers down to the right, to the right, all the way to the right, to the lowest? Pass down to the right. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I know the blood that gives me strength. When will it do it? When will it do it? From day. Sounds like church right now. You may not hear it on the radio, but that's good church. Andre Crouch wrote that song when he was 15 years old. And that's good. Somebody said, Never lose. Never lose. Never lose power. It's power. I'm, I'm, I'm. Never lose. I'm thankful that blood will never lose its power. It's power. No matter what you've been through. Yeah. Guilt and shame. Condemnation. 
persecution and pain. Hallelujah. It will never lose its power. You may be seated in his presence as we give our attention to the screens. Dude, what's going on, man? 20 years. Man, it doesn't seem like it's been that long. I still remember the day I was riding with Bishop C.E. Glover, and he asked me, had I ever met E. Dewey Smith? And I was like, no. And he went on to talk about not only what an amazing preacher you were or are, but what a great mind you have. And man, when I tell you he didn't lie, you are by far one of the greatest thinkers and preachers of our time, man. Your, not only your handling of the King's English, your handling of God's word, but your uh, handling of history and Greek and and uh, Hebrew and just everything about what you do in the pulpit is something to be admired. But man, more than all of that is your humility. You're just a good old boy from Macon. And I say that with great pride, that with everything God has done for you, with every stage God has set you on, you have never lost that you ain't nobody but he do it. And I appreciate that so much, man. Kim and I thank you uh, and your incredible wife, my sister, for uh, your friendship, for your love. Uh, Andrea, we love you dearly. He ain't nothing without you, but you already know that, right? So listen, man, we love you. We love the house of hope. And uh, we thank God for 20 years. And I'm agreeing with you that 2024 is the year of the reset. Man, you're my brother in the faith. You're my brother in the flesh, but you already know. You're my brother in the frat. I, I, I love you, man. Root, peace. I am sure that I have the same feelings that everybody else had who uh, have been asked to do this. And that is, how do I summarize almost 20 years of impact um, into a short video clip? It's almost impossible to do. Uh, my name is Keiki or Kanisha, and I am honored to be able to wish my pastor bro and Mrs. Smith and the family a happy 20th anniversary. Uh, so my House of Hope story is um, interesting. I actually learned about House of Hope prior to coming to Spelman. My uncle said, hey, I know what kind of churching you used to. I know what kind of preaching you used to. I know what kind of teaching you used to under your dad, and I know exactly where you need to be. So obviously I come here my freshman year and I go to a completely different church. <laughs> they picked us up, they dropped us off, they fed us. So it was convenient. Uh, but I'll never forget Mother's Day weekend of 05. I woke up that Sunday and I said, you know what? I don't know where this church is. I don't know where Decatur, Georgia is, but I'm going to get there. So I took a taxi. Uh, didn't even know if I could afford it, <laughs> but I took a taxi to, at the time, HF Shepherd Drive. And when I walked into the church, I immediately fell apart. It wasn't a sad cry. It was a sort of I'm home kind of feeling that was overwhelming. Uh, I sat through that worship experience just feeling 
like I was where I was supposed to be. And after church was over, I walked up to the front of the church and I'll never forget. Pastor looked at me and said, Kanisha, girl, where you been? We've been waiting on you. And I just was like, how do you even know who I am? <laughs> I think I look like my aunt. So he kind of just put two and two together. But in that moment, he immediately introduced me to Mrs. Smith. She embraced me. He introduced me to Ty um, Stevens. She embraced me. And he sort of in that moment put a village of people around me that I promise you have taken care of me and raised me since that very day. Um, I could go on and on about the spiritual maturation and the growth that I've had under his leadership as my pastor. And I could also go on and on about the growth and maturation I've had in life in general um, with him, with them as my brother and sister, uh, two people who have always looked out for me, always made sure I was okay with resources, jobs, uh, a good talking to when I needed it. <laughs> um, even in, you know, the hardest times of my life and losing my father, not a lot of people say can say that they have a pastor and a first lady who will just text you on Father's Day or around his birthday and just say, hey, I'm thinking of you, sis. I love you. I'm praying for you. Out of all of the people that they are responsible for, just having that personal touch is, is huge. So, again, I don't even have the time to tell you guys all the things, but this is a couple um, that have, by all means, just – literally raised me since I've been here in Georgia and made sure that I was okay. And I'll end with this. Recently, First Lady tried to slide me a couple dollars for dinner. And I kind of looked at her like, I don't need this anymore. And she looked me dead in my face and she said, we promised your parents that we will take care of you. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And I can stand here today or sit here today and tell you that that is exactly what they have done. I love you, Pastor Smith. I love you, sis. I love you, boys. And I'm so thankful that I've been able to sit under this leadership for all these years. Happy 20th anniversary. Good morning. Good morning, church. It's so good to be here. This is my church uh, also. And so, uh, and I wanted to bring my husband here with me, but this is my pastor. And I love my pastor. And um, I will just say this, because I know we don't have much time. <laughs> but uh, DeKalb County, 5th District's uh, Distinguished Citizen Award is presented to Reverend Dr. E. Dewey Smith. <laughs> and I want you to have this. Also, also, I have a okay. Also, I have a proclamation that I'm not going to read, and he's going to take the mic from me. But uh, I just want to say that this, on behalf of CEO Michael Thurman and myself, as serving as presiding officer and commissioner of DeKalb County. Today, May, March the 17th, 2024, Chile, Reverend E. Dewey Smith Day. <laughs> and, and, and lastly, I just want to say that I was brought into this church. And it was by deaths because I went to several funerals where Pastor Smith utilized. And some just kept telling me, come to this church, come to this church. And I did. And I love it. Thank you for 20 years. Thank you for being my pastor. And one other thing, I've worked with Margie Gill, and I, and I know what the pastor does. And I can't, and I know what Andrea does also. And I can't say enough about the two of them, but you all know them. Um, I worked with Margie Gill in Tabitha's house since I became a commissioner in 2015. And we have given, and since today is the 20th, I mean, since this month is the 20th 
anniversary, I'm giving another $100,000 to Tabitha's house. Pastor, I can't top that. Hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Hundred K. Well, you know, I'm uh I'm so honored to be here to recognize your twenty years of pastoral leadership, making connections throughout this community, throughout this country, and indeed across with uh, our continent of Africa. Thank you so much for all that you do to uplift everything that you touch, including this very land that we um, are dwelling upon at this particular moment. The land was in distress and uh, the pastor has some long feet, <laughs> steps, he's got a big step, he took a big step and, um, and the rest is history. But it was, it's still being digested, that meal. It's still being digested. And so uh, everything that we can do to support uh, the uplifting of this community, uh, I want to be associated with. And that's why I have prepared a proclamation. And last but not least, a proclamation uh, that recognizes uh, Dr. E. Dewey Smith's 20 year anniversary of servanthood and pastoral excellence. And it also proclaims this day, the 17th day of March, 2024, to be Dr. E. Dewey Smith Day in the 4th Congressional District. Good morning, House of Hope family. On behalf of my fellow board members, we stand today to honor the angel of this house, Lady Andrea and Colin and Kamari. I do have a proclamation and I will read part of it. Um, we just want you to know that, you know, your work and the work that you've done as the 22nd pastor of the Greater Travelers Rest Baptist Church, House of Hope Atlanta, you've made an impact in the world. And sometimes we take the gifts that we have for granted, but we want you to know that we love you at home, at your house. We appreciate you, and even as the world celebrate you, you know you can always come home, and we love you. We love Lady Andrea. We love the Smith family, and God has truly favored the House of Hope Atlanta in the gift of Dr. E. Dewey Smith. Let's give it up for our pastor. Amen. Amen. And how can you say thank you to someone who's done the things that you've done, your passion, for the disenfranchised, your passion for souls, your passion to reach the world for Christ. And we want you to know that this board of directors stand with you. And it is indeed an honor to be your co-laborers in this great gospel. And we ask that God not only bless you because of your work and your commitment, but bless your children's children's children. We're so grateful for you. I'm gonna read a, a, a few lines here and we said, where's this anointed servant of God has exemplified excellence in his divine calling for over two decades. The board of directors stands united with the House of Hope family and the broader faith community, extending heartfelt gratitude, love, and appreciation to him, his beloved wife, Lady Andrea, and sons, Kamari and Kylan. And whereas the number 22 not only marks this year of appreciation, but also illustrates the double portion of blessing God has given to the House of Hope Atlanta through the ministry of Dr. E. Dewey Smith. Now, therefore, let it be proclaimed that we, the Board of Directors, declare today a day of gratitude and celebration as we honor the remarkable milestone of the 20th pastoral anniversary of Dr. E. Dewey Smith, Jr. and his extraordinary service to God, the House of Hope Atlanta, and the global faith community. We love you. God bless you. Thank you for your service, sir. I've been asked to give another proclamation. And this one is on behalf of 
the Atlanta City Council in recognition of Dr. E. Dewey Smith. And I'm not going to read the whereas and therefores, and I just skip down to the last line. It says, now therefore be it resolved that we, the members of the Atlanta City Council on behalf of citizens of Atlanta, hereby recognize Dr. E. Dewey Smith's extraordinary contribution to faith, community, and humanity. Let us honor and celebrate Dr. Smith's legacy of compassion, leadership, and service, and may his exemplary life continue to inspire us all. And it's signed by all of the 15 of the Atlanta City Council, Doug Shipman, President. Amen. This day is not an ordinary day, a signature anniversary is extraordinary time because when the extraordinary happens at this intersection eternity meets time I'm under orders and always obey my elders <laughs> not to read the whole thing and so I'm going to just read the first and the last paragraph but I want you to know this has been well crafted and when you get home for your evening devotions we want you to read every word Martin Luther King Jr. International Chapel, Morehouse College. The Reverend Dr. E. Dewey Smith, Jr., class of 93. Two successful decades is not an accident. It is a commitment to determination, dedication, and divinely inspired intentionality Generations will glorify God because Pastor E. Dewey Smith Jr.'s generous and gracious gift to the colony of faith called the House of Hope. Clearly, God's heart for humanity has sustained the incarnation of the last 20 years we celebrate today. Only by continuing to be an ally of divinity can the presence of God be actualized in the ordained destiny of Pastor E. Dewey Smith, Jr., a likable, logical, loyal listener to the Prince of Peace forever challenging this household of faith to reflect the nonviolent consciousness of Christ. From Morehouse to your house, sincerely congratulations. The 17th day of March in the 2024th year of our Lord, David Anthony Thomas, PhD, 12th president of Morehouse College. Lawrence Edward Carter, Sr., Ph.D., founding dean of the Martin Luther King, Jr. International Chapel. Sir, you have my sincere, personal congratulations. I have announced this previously, but for the new people in the house, we will reiterate that we have not forgotten that announcement. The best is yet to come. We are going to induct his official oral portrait into the International Hall of Honor at Morehouse College. Good morning to the House of uh, Hope family. I'm John Howard. I'm the executive director of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity. And uh, uh, will the members of Omega please stand that's in the room? 
Would you look at that? Uh, you all get a chance to call him pastor. We have the opportunity of calling him brother. And brother Dr. E. Dewey Smith, on behalf of our grand bosses, brother Ricky Lewis, our grand chaplain, brother Roy Johnson, and the over 200,000 initiated members in this great fraternity, uh, we present this proclamation to you. And extend a heartfelt congratulations on your remarkable journey of not only 35 years in the pulpit, but 20 years here. Uh, mental health is important to us. And so, brother, you are always on my mind. And so, and to honor your 20 years, we want to give you $2,000 just for a mental health day. Just self-care. Just love on yourself. And so, I'm going to zell that to you before I leave, so don't let me get out of here. Uh, your, your dedication to the gospel has touched the lives of countless individuals. Your leadership uh, of this huge congregation it reflects your unwavering commitment to service in the community and God's people. Uh, but beyond the pulpit, your talents have left an indelible mark. And we understand that such service is not made possible without a strong support system. So we acknowledge the First Lady. Andrea. Uh, we, we heard that she was riding shotgun in that orange car when you were making $50. Uh, so we want to multiply that by 20 and give uh, the First Lady $1,000 for her self-care day. We know that a, a man who finds a wife has found it a what? A, yep. <laughs> so on this occasion, International Headquarters uh, proudly honors your faithfulness, your fearlessness, your focus, and your friendship. Uh, we celebrate you uh, on a, in, in the name of the cardinal principles of manhood and scholarship and perseverance and, in, and, and uplift. Uh, we continue to, to ask you to serve in the excellence of the name of Almighty God. Uh, please accept this proclamation with the utmost respect and admiration to you. My brother, we love you and we praise God for you. Amen. Hello, my name is Mia Moore and I am so happy and proud to be able to celebrate the 20th anniversary of our pastor, Pastor E. Dewey Smith. Pastor Smith has just meant so much to me in my life and in my family's life. Um, I just want to say that he came to the church at a very crucial time in my life. It was right when my nine-year-old daughter passed away. But Pastor Smith's love and direction and his encouragement just made the difference. And I just always tell him that I will forever be grateful for the role that he has played in the development of my life, in the life of my children. I love Pastor Smith. I love Mrs. Smith. I love their family. And I'm just so grateful for him. Happy, happy anniversary and many, many more. Congratulations to my sister and to my brother. God bless you for all the amazing things that you've done for House of Hope, that you've done for our family. You are literally the glue that holds us all together. To my sister, I say congratulations to you for being not only a help meet, but being a source of inspiration to not only our brother, but to our family as a whole. I love you, Andrea. You are my best friend, a part of me, and we will always always be together love you my sister god bless happy 20th anniversary pastor thank you for everything you've done for me i really appreciate you and thank you for being such a great mentor to me. dr e dewey smith jr thomas beavers here i bring you greetings from the star church in the beautiful and the magic city of birmingham alabama not to be confused with the magic city in atlanta georgia first and foremost i want to say happy 20 year anniversary to you in the House of Hope Atlanta, House of Hope West Point, House of Hope Macon, House of Hope Africa, literally all over the world. And I do mean not just on the world wide web. I wanna say thank you for welcoming me and my family into the Ambassador's Assembly with arms wide open. You have been real. Thank you for your transparency. You have been relatable. One of the most attractive things about the Ambassador's Assembly 
is that the founder and the leader is actually somebody you are able to talk to and you have remained relevant down through the years. When I was a kid, they lifted a hymn that said a charge to keep. I thought they were singing Ray Charles. I have a God to glorify. My favorite part of that particular meter is when they got to the part that says to serve this present age. That's exactly what you have been doing. Continue to be great. I love you so much. Happy 20 years. treat for you. Something good. Now, John, you had it in your heart. I know you didn't ask me to do this, yeah. but you had it in your heart to do something special for the past. past. Yeah, it's did. important that you know this because you, you need to know that people love you. Yeah. I and know. so, John, love you, why don't you tell the man of God man, what I got, you had in mind for him? All I know is, is that you, you, know? you talk about these people all the time. Uh-huh. And I thought it would be good for you to have one of your favorite groups come just all for you. All the way from where? Canton. Yes, sir. Pastor. Mississippi. Turn around, sir. There he is. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Harvey Watkins and the Canton Spirituals. <laughs> Come on, church. Come on, church. Y'all in for All the way, Doc. All the way. <laughs> he crying. He crying. Who's crying? They both Everybody crying. crying. Y'all stop crying. crying. We, got, we got to get to this. <laughs> Y'all are in for a treat this morning, <laughs> House of Hope. Y'all know, we, even though it's 2024, our past is an old soul. He got yes, an old spirit yes, all the yes. way from Macon, Georgia. He always sang in a quartet, so we thought it not robbery to have his favorite. The legend. The legend. Himself. Harvey Watkins. Come from a poor family. Huh? Didn't have much. But the law. Been good to me. Listen here. <laughs> Love Listen, you, Doc. They're getting all set up. It should just take a few seconds for them to get set up, and we are in for an amazing, 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 amazing <laughs> treat this morning in celebration of 20 years, 20 church. years, Doc. 20, 20 years. years. Love you, Doc. So listen, I want y'all to do us one favor. I need you to do us a favor. I need you to do us a favor. This is the best time to do this right now. We're going to do it now. We're going to do it later. But while they're getting set up, just to give them a second, listen, this is what, what I want you to do. I don't know about you all, but I love to eat. Mm -hmm. My wife and I, we love to go eat. We uh -huh. love to go to restaurants, huh? Uh-huh. And something that I learned is that, uh, and uh. something that I learned is that depending on, every, every, the service at every restaurant is not the same. Uh, whereas? Uh-huh. <laughs> Some restaurants you go to, the service is just incredible. Therefore. Some restaurants you go to, the service is just so-so. And unto. And what I learned, John, <laughs> John, what I learned is that the reason why the treatment is, is different at different restaurants is yes, that sir. there are some restaurants where gratuity is already included. True. You're right. And so the restaurants where the gratuity is already included, they can kind of treat you any kind of way because they know that it's already going to come. Right. right. But right. then there are some restaurants where gratuity is not included, so they're going to give you the best service. They're going to yes, make sir. sure yes, sir. that they do everything they can to make sure that you are satisfied and happy. Mm -hmm. Can I let you know something? Pastoring is a service at a restaurant where gratuity is not included. Yes, sir. You're right. And so when we recognize the fact that we have a servant, a server who goes above and beyond and to beyond. do whatever he can to make sure that we are satisfied and that our, our food comes out and that it's fresh and it's prepared, we make sure that we do what we can to show our gratitude yes, sir. where gratuity is not included. Amen, church. Amen. So I know that Bishop Morton came and he raised a special offering for pastor, but we're going to do something special on his day. And we're going to put his, his, his cash app is on the screen. Uh -huh. You see it behind me. This is our first opportunity to give electronically. And when Pastor Carner comes up later, we'll give a different way as well. Those of you that are online, you can give as well to our pastor. We want to give him a, 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 a love gift that lets him know how much we appreciate him. Listen, even if you already have given throughout the month, if you got a little extra, this is the time. This is the time so we can show our pastor how much we love him. Some churches, the pastor don't stay 20 years. They don't stay 20 months. You're right. Some, some pastors don't stay 20 days. But we have a pastor that has served 
faithfully for 20 years, church. And we want to make sure that we show some love. So no, some of you have some, fine, some physical gifts. You can bring those later. But for the electronic is behind me on the screen. Dollar sign. E-D-S-J. E. Dewey Smith, out. Jr. Huh? E. Dewey and the Smith. cell is E. Dewey at gtrbc.org. Amen. Church, right. can we do that? That's all you need. Hallelujah. Well, all I right. think we're ready. We're good. We're good. House of Hope Atlanta. 20 years, bro. 20, 20 years. years. Dr. E. Dewey Smith, we need everybody in the room to jump up on your feet and welcome to the stage, Harvey Watkins and the Canton Spirituals. Whoa. Come along. Come along. Come along. My friends, come along. Get it. so much we give honor we give honor to God our creator we give honor to Jesus Christ our savior we give honor to this great cathedral and the head of this church and the first lady thank y'all so much for just thinking enough of us to have us here I could act like I'm used to this I know how to do it but I want to let you know I'm humble. I, I'm, I'm like my dad. I'm tickled just to be here. Happy anniversary, sir. We got a couple of songs we're going to sing for you. I'll move on right quick. You know, uh, Jacob got a hold to Esau's birthright. And uh, he saw a girl. And she had to be fine. Now, you can say what you want to say now. But she had to be fine because he worked for seven years. I think her name was Rachel. Uh, he worked for seven years, but he messed around and, and got hooked up with her sister, Leah, who scripture said wasn't so fine. Catch the church say amen. So then the reason I know that Rachel had to be fine, because you understand, you can't get some of us to work for two months. He worked for seven more years just to hook up with that girl, Rachel. And it still didn't work. You know why? Because no matter how fine a person is, if Jesus ain't it, it ain't going to work. 
let the church say something out loud. Let me hear you. So Jacob went on about his business like he should have done all the time. And he was looking for somewhere to go. And he really didn't know where to go. Because Esau was mad with him. His dad-in-law, the women, was mad with him. Jacob said, well, I'll tell you what I got to do. I got to clean up what I messed up. And then I got to start. Oh. I can't hear you. Y'all clap your hands just for a minute. Y'all clap your hands just for a minute. We're not going to bother you long. Just a little bit. It said, say, I got to clean up what I messed up. Uh. I've started my life over again. I gotta leave. Let me tell you what I miss. Uh, yes, I'm starting my y'all clap them hands. You know what I did? I, I made up my mind. I ain't lying no more. Why? Cause the lie, yeah, the cheater. I can't make it through the door. Can I get a witness? I'm starting my life over again. I made up in my mind. I got the I thank you. I'm starting my life over The Lord saved me and spared my life. But about a month later, I lost my voice. I couldn't speak because the nerves in my neck and in my shoulders got messed up. And it stopped sending the message from my voice to my brain because my brain was swollen so bad. So I, I almost lost my memory. But the reason I say almost because I knew my wife and my mama and my name and my food when I'm hungry and all that stuff. You understand? Anyway, when I lost my voice, I was confused. I said, now, my Lord, now, you know, that's all I do is sing. And what I'm going to do? And just as plain as you hear me talking, he said, it ain't been you no way. I wish I had a church this morning. He said, it's been me all the time. And, and you know what? I went from doctor to doctor. I went to six doctors trying to find out what was wrong with my voice because I didn't know. I wasn't a horse because I hadn't been singing. I could be a horse. Something got to be wrong, but they, they couldn't tell me. All they told me is that I don't know. They don't know. They didn't know. I went to speech therapist, and my sister called me from Chicago. I'm trying to make a long story short because I won't tell you all my business. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to make it short. My, my sister called from Chicago. She said, Harvey Lee. That's my middle name, you know. That's what my folks called me, Harvey Lee. You can call me that. Uh, hey, 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 listen, listen. She said, I know a doctor who is an old man. I said, is he white or black? She said, he's, she said, he's not white and he's not black. He said, she said, he's something else. I said, okay, what kind of something else? Anyway, I went to Chicago. His name was Dr. Bastian. When I opened my mouth and tried to speak to him, this way I was talking. How you doing? He said, I know what's wrong with you. I said, you can't know what's wrong with me. You ain't checked me out of that. He took me in a room and showed me a video of people that had what I had. He said, you have spasmodic dysphonia. He said, it's an incurable vocal disease. He said, you'll never, ever talk or sing. Now, what I can do, I can, I can give you a Botox shot in your throat. Let the church say amen. I said, I say, in my throat? <laughs> he said, yeah, in your throat. And you got to come to Chicago every three months and take it just to whisper. So I did it for about four or five months. And I got tired of going to Chicago. And I said, Lord, I, 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 I just ain't going no more. The Lord ain't said nothing. Cause, you know, a lot of people hear from the Spirit all day, but I don't. Some people, every 10 minutes, I hear the Spirit saying. Sometimes I be wanting to get back on the morning bench, you know. 
But in, in, anyway, uh, I never went back to Chicago. And that's been 15 years ago. And I want the church, if you ain't got nothing to praise him for, I want you to praise him for me right now because of my voice. I know you hear my voice. Now, without any, but without any music, without any music, I just want to ask you something. You ain't got to say nothing if you don't want to. I'm, I understand. I be like that sometimes. But if you could just think a minute of something that nobody done for you but Jesus. And if you don't care who nobody, just open up your mouth and, and give them the loudest praise that you have. I can't hear y'all. Thank you. Just hunt somebody say, in case you don't understand why I'm getting loud. I want you to know he's been good to me. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. Let's say. Before we get to shouting and, and dancing and jumping off this, no, I ain't gonna jump off the stage. Before we get there, I just wanna sing a song for you. This is for you. I know this ain't your song. This is a song that I got for you. Come on. I'm, a, I'm from a little town up Highway 55 called Camp, Mississippi. And it was once in a while I go there to the streets that I used to drink liquor and smoke dope in. The same people that remember me when I was doing it told me I would never be nothing. I would always be a bomb. Shh, shh, every once in a while. I look down the line and I wonder sometimes how I faded through the storm and the rain, Lord have mercy. Then I look down the line and I wonder sometimes how I Heartaches and pain. Listen, y'all. Just a child in the streets. No college and no degree. But take a look at me. Don't go nowhere. This is my lead singer. If y'all like him, clap your hand. Let's hang another song. Come on, D. Let's do it right now. I'm ready to shout. I just like you said. Let me say something else. Listen here. I have to cry sometimes. Mm -hmm. I have to cry. 
cry sometimes. Oh, good God Almighty, listen here. Sometimes singing with tears oh, in my eyes, but I'm waiting on you. Please, Lord, we got to move on and sing it like this. Paul, oh, tell him, fix it, G. Fix it, G. Somebody need fixing that. Somebody need fixing that. This is what I tell him. Go to the hospitals. Somebody need you. Somebody laying there. And they're racking with pain. Well, listen, anybody need fixing Anybody need fixing If you know you need fixing I'll let me hear you clap your hand. I can't hear y'all. I'll let me hear you clap your hand. Come on now. Or let's make a joy for noise. I can't. Or let's make a joy for noise. I'll fix my heart. I'll fix my heart. Or let's make a joy for noise. I can't. Or let's make a joy for noise. I can't. Or let's make a joy for Oh, can't you feel it? Can't you feel it, Bob? Oh, can't you feel it? Can't you feel it, Bob? Oh, can't you feel it? Take me to the Won't God fix it? Won't God fix it? We got to move on tonight. We got to leave y'all this morning, but let's say this right here. Glad I've got Jesus. How many of y'all remember that song? Ha! Huh? So glad I've got Jesus. Good God Almighty, y'all. So glad I've got Jesus. Yeah, yeah. We got to get out of here, Pastor. But we got to sing it like this. Good God said, I've got Jesus. Since I got Jesus, I got him all in my walk. I got him all in my talk. I said, the Holy Ghost will make you walk right. I said, the Holy Ghost will make you talk right. Can I, I get one witness? I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Oh, you're the girl all in your hand. Oh, you're the girl all in your hand. Oh, you're the girl all in your hand. sang a song for you. My mama had a stroke, a massive stroke. She's paralyzed. She's 91. Don't, don't misunderstand me. She's 91 years old. She's a good girl. I'm 69 years old and she still called me her baby. I said, Mama, stop it. I'm, I'm almost 70. Shut up. You're still my baby. Come give me some sugar. And I ease over that girl a little sugar. Because I'm in love with her. Anyway, she can't talk right now. But she look at me. I see love in her eyes. That's why I see love in your eyes. I see it. We want to sing a song for you. This is my mama's song. We can't sing it long because we're going to we start hollering in here. And, and go to acting indecent. Let's sing a little. I saw a blind man tapping along. He could not 
not seem like you and me. I said, oh, oh, oh mister, I feel sorry, sorry for you. He said, when I I don't like that. He said, What a wonderful time! Oh, thank you, Lord. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me pull my heart out just for a minute. Pastor, I saw a sick man lying in his bed. Cancer had ate up most of his body. My dad was just laying there, almost dead. And I looked at her, I said, Daddy, you know I love you. And if I could, I would trade places with you. He said, but Harvey, when I get home, my body gonna be brand new. Then he put his arms around me. He said, hard, but when I get there, I see all my friends. I said, can I get a witness in here? I said, can I get a witness? In my what a wonderful time. You're talking about a good time. I'm not talking about a headache. I'm not talking about a stomachache. I'm some, talking about something a Tylenol couldn't handle. But I want to ask you, won't God answer prayer? Ah, y'all, y'all ain't talking to me. Won't God answer prayer? Let me tell you how I know he will. The doctors gave up on me. They told me you got to stay. How many know that prayer will, prayer will, prayer will, won't prayer change things. I kept praying, sometimes crying, praying, crying, praying, sometimes crying, y'all. But when I got up on my knees, I found out that God will wipe tears. Only wipe tears from your eyes. I 
went back to that same doctor. Somebody ought to shout glory. I went back to that same doctor. He looked in my face. He said, I want to know something. He said, how do you feel? I said, well, doctor, this time I'm feeling a little bit better. He said, there's a reason why you feel better this time. He said, we ran some more tests on you. We don't know how it happened. We don't even know what happened, but somehow, somehow, you're cancer free. Won't God heal your body? Won't God heal your body? Won't God do it? Won't God heal your body? All I have a witness in here. All I have a witness in here. Won't God heal? Won't God heal? Somebody ought to tell him, thank you, Jesus. I tell him, don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. I tell him, don't leave me, Jesus. Don't leave me, Jesus. Don't leave me. And what I can't speak, what I can't speak. I got in something you sometimes I have trouble going to sleep. But I just lay there in my bed and I said, Don't leave me. 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 Shh. 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 Y'all step up to the mic, just puff at it. Step up to the mic just for a minute. I know you don't feel good, but it's come to the mic. I'm in your care. Let me hear a little more. That, that's why I want to write that. Everybody else, listen to me. Now I want you to do this from your heart. Because it's not going to be affected. It is not going to be a blessing if you don't do it from your heart. Put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder. Say, neighbor. I, I can't hear y'all. Say, neighbor. I don't know about you. But down through the hill, it's been a little rough on me. Sometimes I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how I was going to make it. I thought I was going to lose my family. I thought I was going to lose my house. But somehow, somehow, I'm sorry, but we wasn't, we wasn't supposed to do that. Shh. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I tried not to do it. I, I tried to be professional, 
but what I think about, uh, what he got for me, uh, my soul. Thank you. We got to get out of here. Shh, shh, softly. We got to get out of here. Pastor, Pastor, I want you if, you, if you know how to cry and sing at the same time, I want you to come up here with us on, on what we're getting ready to do. First of all, I'm 69 years old. I went to my first class reunion in 19... I think of the 15th, the 15th year, and everybody was so bougie. So I, I, I didn't want to say nothing. So I just waved my hand. Everybody was talking, talking about what, what they do. But I got to thinking about I was sitting there with a pocket full of money. I could have got up and bragged because I had money in all pockets. And I ain't lying neither. But I, I, want, to, I want to let them know because they used to call me a bomb and a dropout because I dropped out of school, but I dropped back in and graduated. <laughs> Check it out. I wanted to stand up and let them know what I had in all my pockets. I wanted to show it to them. But you know what I was thinking? I started thinking about it. Shh. I said, shh. I started thinking about it. When they evicted me and my wife from my apartment, they set our stuff out on the, on, on the parking lot. My daddy came by. My dad was a truck driver. He said, he was on my mind. What's going on here? I said, well, I, said, I, I couldn't pay my rent. He said, why you ain't coming? I said, I won't go ask you for no money no more. He said, yeah, that's so sure stupid of you. I said, well, it might be, but I ain't asking you for no more money. I said, I'm going to try to get my stuff to the storage. He said, put it on my truck. He said, no, nope. took me to the storage. He had to pay for it because I ain't had no money. And Dad said, well, you want to go home with me? Dad said, oh, you, always, you always got somewhere to stay. If I got somewhere to stay. I said, no, take, take me to my sister's house. And we stayed over there for about three months at my sister's house. And my wife said, I saw a house that I want. I didn't have a job, didn't have nothing. I wanted to be a professional singer. One of the most pitiful things in the world is a broke pro. <laughs> Can I get a witness in here tonight? I <laughs> didn't have a dime, but I had a suit on every day and finally finally my wife said i want this house she took me and showed it to me i ain't have a dime i didn't even have a car i got i was in the group band drove it i'm telling y'all all my business i drove it over there and got on my knees in the van i said lord i know i don't bother you much because i know i don't deserve it so i know i got flaws hanging all off my ears I said, but my wife won't want this house. She don't never have me for nothing. And I want you to bless me with it. I called one realtor. I met him at this house. This is the truth. My bass player can tell you, because he got a house from the same man. That man said, on, we, we never got in the house. He's on the steps. He said, what's your name? I said, Harvey Walker. He said, you have any money? I said, not any. He said, do you have a bank account? I said, no, sir, not nothing. He said, what you do? I said, I sang gospel. Who you sang gospel with who? I was with the cancer. He said, hush your mouth. You, you, it's not Harvey Watkins. I said, yes, I am. I'm old broke Harvey. He said, well, you know what I'm going to do? Because I know your sons. He said, I'm going to put $2,500 in a bank account for you. And I'm going to let it stay as long and clear. And you're going to get that house. And, and I've been in that house ever since 1998. <laughs> One of my friends kept asking me, I tell you, his name was Keith Wonderboy. Keith said, Harvey, all that money you got, why you ain't moved in a mansion? I said, I'm going to wait till I get home to get my mansion. He said, well, he said, Harvey, I know you got money. I said, that's right. He said, he said why, you, well, why you stay here? I said, because I remember when I first got here. I didn't have no money. A lot of my friends, I don't know about y'all, but they thought it 
it was so funny. Oh, yes, sir. But I. Are you glad that I can stand right here and say, can I get a witness in here? Tell the Lord, he's been good, sure, oh, been good to me, oh. Everybody put your hand together while we sing this song. Come on here. <laughs> I come from a poor family. We didn't have much. But the Lord been good to me. I come from a poor family. We didn't have much. But the Lord been good to me. I didn't have no money. A lot of my friends thought it was funny. But I'm so glad today I can stand right here and say that the Lord been good to me. Oh, he been good. And the camels uh, and 
the kangaroo. Mama, can I tell you what it says? Come on, come on, children. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. Come on, children. It's gonna rain. Anybody know it's gonna rain? Let me see you wave your hands. God bless you. We love you. Come on and give God praise once again for the Canton Spirituals. Harvey Watkins, come on, we can do better than that. Come on, somebody give God honor and praise for what God is doing. While we're standing, everyone's standing all over the building. Everyone's standing. Can we pause and take a moment to give God praise once again for our senior pastor, Lady Andrea Smith, Kylan, and Kamar. Come on, we can, we can do better than that. We can do better than that. Come on, we can do better than that. While we're standing really quickly, really quickly, if you're here and you've heard everything, you've heard the, the word given to us through song. Was it the word preached to us in song? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you're here, this is a wonderful moment to unite with this church family, to get a church home if you don't have one. And so really quickly, we want to, because we want to get out of here, we want to continue to celebrate our pastor. Don't we have an amazing pastor? If you're watching online or if you're in this room and you don't have a relationship with Jesus the Christ, we want to extend an invitation to Christian discipleship. Listen, if you're in overflow, we'll wait on you. We'll wait on you. Pastor's appreciation is a wonderful time to renew or to commit, to renew your relationship or to commit your life to Christ. Amen, amen. If you're not growing where you're going you don't have a church home we want to invite you to come now we'll wait on you in overflow there I see you brother I knew you were here I see you brother we were talking about the rain maybe we can play something about the rain maybe fall down on me something like that we'll wait on you if you're in overflow we'll wait on you we'll wait on you fall down fall down Fall down oh, on me. Fall down. Can we ask him to rain in this place? Fall down. Come on. While the spirit is falling. Fall down. Oh, I see you. Fall down. We need you, Jesus. Fall down. Fall down, fall down. I, I believe there's somebody else in the room that wants to come. Fall down, fall down. If you're here, if you're here, you don't have a relationship with the Lord. We'll wait on you. Fall down. One more time. If you if you want to rededicate your life. While the spirit is yet falling, if you want to rededicate your life, we'll wait on you. We'll wait on you. We'll wait on you. We'll wait on you. Fall down. If you don't have a relationship with the Lord, one more time. If you're an overflow, we'll wait on you. Fall down. Fall down. That's it. Will you give God praise once again as you take your seats? Amen. Listen, we have an incredible pastor. And if there were, let's give God praise once again for our pastor. If there were to be a word preached today, it would be 1 Chronicles 4, 9 and 10, where it says, Jabez prays, he says, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand would be with me 
and that you keep me from hurting our men. So that's what we're praying over our pastor. Listen, if you enjoy worship today, put your hands together one more time. We're about to get out of here. We're about to get out of here and continue celebrating, but we want to sow once again into the life of our pastor, our deacons. If you would prepare in our ushers, we want to get the receptacles here in the front uh, because uh, God has given us not only a preacher, but God gave us a pastor, a global voice, a mentor, a brother, a friend. I've known him since I was two years old and he hasn't changed and I thank God for that. I've known our first lady, Andrea, since I was two. And I thank God for both of them. So we want to we wanna pause for a moment to give. If you would ready your gifts at this time, I'm going to pray over our offering. The receptacles are coming. And we want you to give as you are so led because we cannot compensate him for sleepless nights. We cannot compensate him for all the worry and all the stress that comes along with pastor and us. But we can so generously into his life and just say thank you. Let us pray over our gifts. God, we thank you for both gift and giver. We thank you because you are the God who prospers us and we're standing under our open heaven and we give to others. We bless our pastor because you've so blessed us. We know that favor follows your servant. And so God, we pray right now that you would bless these, our gifts, that they may continue to enrich the life of our senior leader and your kingdom. We ask all these things in Jesus name. Amen. 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 As you're coming to give. As you're coming to give, just know that there are also electronic ways that you can give on the screen. We have Pastor's Cash App and Pastor Zell on the screen, but we invite you to come now in our time of giving. Amen. You can actually have your seats. We're going to have one more presentation of love. Let's give God praise for Dr. Sharon Mitchell. Come on. Our executive pastor of ministries is coming now to make our next prayer. Come on. We could do better than that. Amen. For Dr. Sharon Mitchell, my sis. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Carter. How's hope? We're excited for our senior pastor's 20th anniversary, Dr. E. Dewey Smith. Let's give him a hand as he comes. I have some people with me. Our church has over 30 plus ministries in this church. Let's give God a praise for that. And they represent some one hundreds of people who volunteer every week in order for us to do this ministry. We have a number of people that help us do that. And so, Pastor, I'd like to present to you, there's a scripture in uh, 1 Timothy 5 and 17 that says, let the elders who, hold on, let me, let me just read it. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy and be given double honor. And so we like to count it well, honorable to uh, stand here for you, to say we appreciate you, we love you, and we have some presentations. Now, we don't have $100,000, <laughs> but we do have hundreds of dollars that all of these ministries that are represented, if you all will come forward, we have our women ministry, we have our men's ministry, we have a hospitality, we have ushers, health and wellness, ministers of hope, men of hope, uh, ushers, we've got our deacons ministry, deacons wives, we've got our prison ministry, we've got our new members ministry, uh, we say the ministers of hope, they all have presentations they're gonna give you. All of them have money, by the way. We did ask for money, and it is a substantial amount of money this year, y'all. Uh, because for 20 years, you need to do a little more than just a few coins. So we have a number of them that are presenting. Deacon Wives, they're still coming. Uh, sisterhoods class, uh, the seniors ministry. Uh, financial ministry, did I miss anybody? Prison, uh, prayer ministry. I see health and wellness in the back. And we dance ministry, uh, praise team drama ministry, and we have some monies from the staff. So on behalf of the ministries of the church, Dr. Smith, we wanted to sow to you to make this special. You have been special to us as a senior pastor, and we know that this is a token. This is not anything that is, that is even worthy of what you deserve. Uh, outreach ministry, I see y'all now, y'all made it. And we got somebody, oh, our dancers are here. And so as you see, this is the representation of 30 plus ministry representing hundreds of volunteers of this church. Let's give them a hand. Come on, church, let's keep clapping as they come.
have his mic? Y'all give him a hand. He's speechless, and that's not often. Well, you all, welcome to the stage one more time. We've spent all day celebrating him, but it is the time of the hour to hear one more time from our pastor, Dr. E. came here 20 years ago, one of the first things they said, uh, Deacon Edward said, said, we don't, we don't, we celebrate church anniversary, but we don't, we don't do pastor's anniversaries. So, you know, so that's been my mindset for 20 years, you know, that we really don't make a big deal out of it. And uh, just for what y'all have done today, I, I don't, I don't even have words. It's rare that you get me without words. just you know because you know you, you make so many sacrifices that people don't see and you know and sometimes you wonder if people care you know if people really care and um, you know if y'all just if y'all just knew the number the number of checks that I didn't take you know what I mean I, I couldn't take you know so we can get things going I mean months years um, if you check the record years of checks and because um, people, so many people think that when you do this, you know, there's this character of preachers that all you want is money. You know what I mean? And people, you know, and so, and all I want to do is serve. And um, and so just today, I don't even, I, I'm just, I don't know. I, just, I, don't, I don't know. This is... It's, it's beyond touching. I'm, I'm just so f amazed. One more thing I want to say. Uh, Andre told me uh, yesterday that one of our deacons, his cancer has come back. And uh, he got cancer when he was young and has come back and he's going to the doctor this week. One of our deacons, and he's been taking care of his mama. Um, she's been down, you know, not at our best, but his cancer's come back. And I don't, I don't want him to go to the doctor this week without being covered by his church. Uh, that's Deacon Alan Kilpatrick. Dana, if you bring Alan up, up front, I want the deacons to surround him. Y'all give one of our youngest deacons, y'all give Alan a hand. Cancer's come back, and I want the deacons around him. Get in the middle. Y'all form a circle around him, please. Everybody will stand. We're going to be, we're going to leave. Thank y'all for staying, you know. God, you've been our help in ages past, and you're our hope for years to come. You're our shelter from the stormy blast, and you're our eternal home. You've been the God of our weary years, and you're the God of our silent tears. You're the God who has brought us thus far on the way. Thou who has by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in the path, we pray. God, we thank you for being our God, our healer, and our creator. You're our sustainer. It is in you that we live, O oh God, move and have our being. You made us, you know our thoughts, you know we have need of even before we ask. The, the hairs on our heads have been numbered by thee. And because you made us, you can remake us. Lord, we've heard through song how you've healed from stage four cancer. Thank you for that prophetic declaration that creates an atmosphere of expectation. And if you did it for the Canton spirituals, you can do it for Alan Kilpatrick. Thank you that when he was in his early 20s, when he faced his first bout with cancer, as a college student at Southern University, it was by your grace and your mercy that you've healed him. 
and allowed them to live a, a, a healthy life. And now, Lord, cancer has resurfaced, shown his ugly head again. But we are surround, he's surrounded now by the prayers and intercession of the saints. Thank you for his lovely wife, Dana, who has stood by his side all these years. Thank you for his mother, Lord, who has faced death even herself over the past few months. And Lord, whose presence today indicates that when the doctors told her she only had a matter of days, that those days have turned into years. And we give you praise that even her late night that she's here now praising you and thanking you for her son. So God, as Alan goes before the surgeon this week, in the name of Jesus, we ask according to your will, we're asking you, we can't place demands on you. We're asking you if you would allow your providential care to go before him. You have the power, oh God, to dry up every tumor, to regulate every cell. We send cancer back to its place that has no purpose in you. So God, in the name that's above every name, we ask for complete healing for his body. Complete healing with nothing broken, nothing lacking, nothing missing. And there'd be another in the room or who's watching me live, who's struggling right now with disease or debt or divorce or death or depression or distress. We ask that you would be the lift of our heads. Dismiss us from this place, oh God. Thank you for these 20 years. And I thank you, God, that in the lives of your people, you're gonna restore the years that locusts have eaten, palmer worm have taken away. Oh Lord, we pray for restoration. We pray for healing. We pray that you reset those areas of our lives. Refuel your people. Dismiss us now from this place. But we all beseech of thee that thou wouldest never benedict us from thy presence. And now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that's at work within us. We ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. I love y'all. Coming around.